Patreon.com slash the walk-off podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. If you're <laughs> watching this right now and you haven't hit the like button, Billy, get on it. Bug your brother. Tell him to do the same. To start with, I do wish to just kind of calm the storm that is Blue Jays fandom a little bit on Tim Meza. Okay. Listen, I understand that the last two times Tim Meza pitched was when he got blown up in the wild card game and, and helped contribute. Contribute was not the reason for, but contribute <laughs> to the complete collapse of that 8 1 lead they had against the Mariners. And then yesterday, yeah, he got hit. It was a bummer. And if you look at those hits he gave up, there were a couple of them that felt like the balls had eyes. You know, like for the most part, it's not like he was completely rocked. So that's good news. Again, the W is the W. But I know that there's a lot of hate going Tim Mays' way that truly is a little unwarranted. And he is a good pitcher. And you just need to look at his numbers in 2021 to remember he is a very important member of this bullpen and the only lefty back there. So he's going to get the ball. Jimmy Garcia. I mean, we brought this up right off the top, right, buddy? 18 ERA, but he's got a W. <laughs> the W. Yep, sure does. Now, on the positive side, buddy, Eric Swanson. Wow. That was fun to watch, man. The dude was painting corners. Yeah. Got uh, those strikeouts. Yeah, good to watch. Um, I, I feel good about Eric Swanson. I think the bullpen, it was just one of those days. Yeah. You know, that the whole team lacked sharpness. Like there were, there were some guys who were really dialed in and then there were some that just didn't seem like they were ready for the regular season. And you don't want to harp too much on game one. Look, and we're I'll really, win. yeah, we're nitpicking details here, but. This is why baseball is 162 games. This is why it'll never be a 16 game season. Like it's the back of the baseball card means something, right? So the mark of madman though. He looked good. Yeah. Three up, three down. He was the one guy who came in and just pedal to the metal. Two strikeouts as well. Did what he was supposed to do. And again, no. like, there were a lot of scenarios throughout the game where you were like, all right, this is a clutch moment. Let's see how focused, let's see how their attention to detail is here. And and then they, they just would drop the ball. But Romano came in and was lights out, did exactly what was expected of him. I had no doubts that Romano was going to come in when we were in that ninth inning and the Jays had just tied it up. And then they show that, that shot of Romano down in the bullpen, looking through the chain link fence, dumping yeah. the the water on his head. I'm like, oh, the Mark of Madman is in full he's psycho ready. mode right now. He yeah, is, he's going into psycho mode exactly. Yeah. So, but here's the thing: is like, I mean, we could talk clutch all we want, but it's uh, our my biggest criticism, and I'm not the only one who feels this way, is that he is in an entirely different picture when there's base runners on. Yes. Right. If he, so, he came in. If he didn't go three up, three down, and one of those hitters got on base, now it's Paul Goldschmidt at the plate. Yeah. Was the fourth batter he was going to face. MVP Paul Goldschmidt with a base runner on and these yeah. new like pickoff attempt restrictions and stuff and the pitch clock. I was not looking forward to seeing Jordan Romano with a base runner with new rules against NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt. That felt like he needed a three up, three down inning, or that was over. I had like that. It, there was no gray area for me in my confidence with him was three up, three especially, down or we lose. Especially with the way that game went. Yeah. So literally every pitcher or every batter he faced felt like a must get. And he got them. So mm -hmm. confidence level in Romano right now is 10 out of 10. 